Yep. So we get a little bit to get through on this one, <laughs> but I'm super passionate about talking on the topics of, I guess, real life situations that I've ran into in the past, basically on how to get prepared for recording, what to do leading up to it, what to expect and how much to be involved with in the mix process. And then if you are lucky enough or you understand what's happening, the mastering. So what's super critical for me is before any recording situation, you really have to know your parts. And I don't mean have a little understanding of them. You really, really have to fucking know them. Unless you're Jimi Hendrix or someone of that caliber that can free flow and improvise like a fucking wizard, which I'm not. <laughs> you really have to know your parts. Now, there's a few reasons why this is important. It will give you confidence leading up into it. You will deliver your parts a lot cleaner and clearer and you'll articulate them, let's face it, way fucking better once you've learnt them as opposed to trying to figure them out on the spot. And you'll have a better vibe for yourself in the studio and for the producer. The other thing is time. When you're recording, time is super critical because you might not be able to get back there in a hurry. The band might not be able to. It might be a once off with the producer. You might have hired a certain piece of gear that you can only use for that day, which has fucking happened to me. <laughs> Um, and you might not be able to relive or recreate where you're at. The other massive, massive point about knowing your parts and why it fucking matters so much is you've got to listen to this forever. Once you release it, that's it. So if you have something you're iffy on, and if you're like me or like most other musicians, it's gonna decay at your soul one year or 10 years later, you're forever going to be wishing that you recorded or laid down that part that little bit better or smoother or that riff a little bit different. So what you wanna be able to do leading up to a recording session is be fucking comfortable with your parts, be physically able to play them, know them, understand them, and know that when you listen or when you walk away, that you're gonna be okay with it because I can't stress it enough. Once it's done, it's fucking done. <laughs> so you really, really, really want your shit sorted before you even start. I would argue that's the first thing to think about with recording. So point number two that I'm going to make is making sure your gear, your bass, if it's two or if it's fucking five, making sure your gear works properly. Now, when I say that, what tuning are you in? Do you have the right strings that are going to represent the sound you want? Do you have the right gauge strings that are going to represent the tuning that you want? Do you have the right setup intonation because this can be a motherfucker if this isn't right um 
Setting up intonation is so critical. And basically, if this isn't done to perfection, and I would argue with a strobe tuner, you're going to hear stuff that's out of tune in the recording. And to give an example of that, my Phil Collins cover of Something Happened on the Way to Heaven, there's quite high tapping in that. So I had to work with two octaves on this bass to make sure that everything was spot on because even your open string can be tuned. It can seem the 12th frets uh, in tune. You might not have a you know complete accurate strobe tuner. Once we started recording, it wasn't right. You could hear it wasn't right. So setting up that is super critical. Another thing I've run into recording was fret buzz. You know, are your frets too high? Do they need to be dressed? Are you playing certain riffs that the producer is not going to allow you to finish the song with because it's buzzing in certain areas? So setting up your bass is super, super critical. You wanna be making sure it's noiseless, it's in tune, your neck set right, your frets right. Also, another thing I've run into is preamp failure. I've been half uh, way through a session doing an album and the preamp just stopped. Now this was unavoidable. It just, one of the volume pots fucked out. There was not much we could really do, but it pays to just make sure your jack is working okay. If you've got an active bass, make sure that your a battery is fully charged or you have a, a fresh battery, um, you know, you don't see any visible rust or that the preamp is actually working okay. Because if you want a specific sound on a specific bass, you're gonna wanna finish the track or the album with that instrument. Making sure of these things is super, super critical. And I've been in situations where I was unable to finish the session or song or album um, because of some of these failures. And it's just eaten me inside because uh, you have the option to finish it with a different bass, but you really don't want to do it. So trying to recreate that day sometimes can be really fucking hard. So I'm just wanting to share <laughs> some real life situations that I've run into that if I, you know, can get on top of, um, at least it'll minimise any potential fuck ups while recording. So making sure your bass is working well <laughs> is critical. Have some spare strings, have a truss rod adjustment tool if you need, have some screwdrivers, have a strobe tuner, have a spare battery. And uh, I think that pretty much takes care of the base side of things, but definitely take the time to tweak and make sure that your instrument's right. And if you don't know how to do that, you know, uh, get someone to help you with it or a luthier to sort it out for you. This is, you know, a fucking game changer for being prepared for a recording. So I hope this information can be uh, received and that it can help someone really understand the importance of why it matters to uh, be prepared. <laughs>
So once again, the better prepared you are mentally and physically, physically in yourself and with your gear, mentally in your emotions and your creativity, hopefully the fucking more enjoyable recording uh, experience that you'll have. Now, the third point, and this is uh, really important, but if I could have given my younger self any advice, it would be exactly this. If you're recording with an engineer, make sure you've either met them or that you know work that they've done. And I cannot stress this enough, I've wasted money while I was younger going with people who told me they knew what they were doing, especially, you know, stuff with film clips. And it's just been murder. I uh, was doing a film clip with a band. I know it's not recording, but the same principles apply. And I listened to someone's, I guess, goodwill <laughs> that they were going to be able to give us a mind-blowing clip and whatever. And yeah, look, they couldn't. They had no idea what they were doing. They were fresh, they were young, they were experimenting. Now, that's all good and well, but when you're dealing with time and money and you're dealing with your passion and not wanting it to be, you know, ruined or, or whatever for the day for obvious reasons, it really pays to have either have met or to know work that the producer's done. This is me here talking to my younger self to be able to uh, hopefully save um, a lot of heartache. So if you know work that they've done, then the chances are if you give a good product, uh, i.e. the recording, the chances are the production, the mixing, you know, the overall end result is going to be what you want. And musicians being very temperamental at times, like we all are, <laughs> or can be, yeah, this can really pull on the heartstrings. So the better prepared you are and the more you have confidence in the engineer, the better your experience is gonna be. Because trust me, you spend money and come out with a result you don't want, it's, it's not an enjoyable feeling. And uh, I'm glad I've gone through these things because it's uh, made me a lot wiser in my choices of um, how I operate, how efficiently I can operate, and who I will work with. So I'm able to achieve what I think is quite a high level of audio quality uh, through these lessons and through these principles and these examples. Um, I think these are really useful tools in order to help you through uh, the recording process, which at the end of the day should be fucking fun. <laughs>I guess the last point that I'm making, whether it be mixing, mastering, just the recording, or they're helping you produce, um, the better you get along with the producer, the better things will be. It won't be a hostile work environment. You will be able to, you know, produce your better work. And, you know, if you're a session cat, then that's your job and that's what you get paid to do and you go in to do it. Sometimes you'd almost have to remove the emotion from it. I'm sure every session player's experienced that at some point. But the better relationship you have with the engineer, the easier the communication is and the better off the overall experience becomes. And anyone who's worked with me knows <laughs> that I'm extremely fucking fussy. I can't settle on something if it's not right. If that takes a hundred hours to get right, then it takes a hundred hours to get right. So I've been quite lucky to have extremely patient 
producers and engineers to work with me over my time. And uh, it's just helped me get a better understanding on how they work. Some want to move quicker than others but the better understanding you have prior to this and the relationship with them, hopefully the better your recording experience is and hopefully you're able to fucking enjoy it, which is, uh, you know, the main point of why we do all this. <laughs>